Here we are in Northamptonshire, sunny Northamptonshire uh, at the end of May. We've just completed uh, an extremely large uh, energy solar storage system um, and we'll show you later. Right, here we are, we're in the plant room. Um, just completed a three phase um, ESS energy solar storage. So here, ladies and gentlemen, we've got 16 4.8 kilowatt hour batteries. Um, they're all in uh, paralleled up in twos. Um, obviously there's a lot of DC cables on this. It is a very big battery bank. It is 72.6 kilowatt hours to be precise. Here we've got four links distributors, basically negative and your positive buzz bars running through. So all your mega fuses are in there. Uh, the mega fuses are for every two sets of batteries. You can see there's parallel up there, there's two. So they will go back to have a 125 amp fuse. Um, coming up from there at the end, if you just get in and have a quick look, we've got two um, RS450 200 amp hour solar charge controllers. Effectively, in each one of these, there is four MPPT trackers which stands for multi power point tracker. So effectively, we've got eight solar charge regulators inside. Um, you can see the cables come up off the roof, down through the flexi conduit, into the DC isolators. These are a double pole. So effectively, you're getting two strings um, of solar in each one. Obviously, you're going in there, you've got one, two, three, four. So, settle down, doggies. Settle down, settle down, you. So anyway, so each of these solar charge controllers will have um, a mega fuse inside the Lynx distributor. Okay, that then brings us on to the servo, which is here. This uh, communicates with everything, all the inverters, um, all the inverters, the color control screen. And here you can see the head end of actually what's going on at the moment. The batteries are at 100%. Um, the solar's kicking out for nearly 5,000 watts. There's more available. There's 3,000 going back into the grid. I'm just going to turn the microwave on to show you that when the critical loads here go up, which is how much power you're using, that the amount of solar coming in off the panels will also increase. So an extra two kilowatts of load. We'll see the critical load start jumping up in a minute. There we go. So critical loads have now increased. And you can see that there's, there was more power available off the solar panels as we're at 5,000, now we're at nearly 7,000. So you see critical loads are going up, more power's coming in. So some's going to the batteries, uh, a lot of it's going back to the grid, and some's going straight from the solar into the critical loads. The loads is how much power you're using. The blue dots actually indicate the way in which the energy is flowing. So, okay, we've now got the microwave on. Uh, you can see the critical loads are at 2,164 on phase one. The other two phases are 40 watts and 82. Um, we are getting um, 6,500 uh, watts coming in off the solar. Um, you can see the blue dots, again, are indicating the way in which the energy is flowing. So some is maintaining the batteries at 100%. The excess is actually going back onto the grid. Here we are up on the roof, 60, 405 watt solar panels. It's just under 25,000 watts of solar. So like I said before, down in the plant room you saw earlier, we've got eight strings, eight strings of solar panels. So shared 60 by eight, you don't get an even number. So we've gone a string of seven, a string of eight, a string of seven, a string of eight, a string of seven, a string of eight, a string of seven, and a string of eight. So it's got seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, seven, eight, which makes 60. Um, okay, so 
We've got a aluminium mounting system here. We've got hanger bolts going through the concrete fibre cement roof into the steel Z purlins. Um, it's quite a laborious system putting a, a mount system on like this because you have to get all the, all the uh, rails as level as you can because there's always undulation in the roof. Um, and because the solar industry is extremely busy at the moment and the rest of the building, um, rest of the building industry, um, struggling at the moment with getting um, labourers when I need them. So I've literally fitted this whole 60 panels all by myself. All right, it's Lee Naylor from Off Grid Installer. Um, here's my customer. I'd like to introduce Daniel Hopkins. Uh, Daniel um, is the site owner and he'll tell you a little bit about the land and what he's doing here and um, why he's having a system or why he's had it. So, basically, um, everybody knows about the high fuel prices and the electricity prices. Well, uh, this system we've got here, which is 60 panels, 16 uh, batteries, what's that? 4.8 kilowatt hour each. 4.8 kilowatt hour each, 16 of them. Uh, we've got three inverters, so we've got three phase power. Um, we've got a cable run up to the backfield here, which we've just seen, which is going to be hopefully planning permission uh, submitting. Um, a glamping site. Uh, it's going to power that. Uh, it powers all the facilities at the farm and those three buildings there at the moment, and the standard caravan, and it's able to charge up the uh, camper vans. And also we're building a house there at the moment, which is going to charge, charge entirely by, by the, um, the solar, power, solar power system that we've installed just now. And that's all going to be pretty much for free. Uh, so, you, so your reasoning for having the system really then is done is to alleviate any future electric bills? Alleviate the future electric bills, yeah. You don't know where they go. You know where they're going to go. After. Yeah. I mean, you've got the environmental issue as well. And if, if, if you... If you take that into consideration, and that certainly yes, it does. You know, alleviate the burning of the fossil fuels, supply the electricity, and that's 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 the long shot of that, really. And it's just been a very successful project. You know, it's it's we've had some some you know some high uh, power usage. I think we took the batteries down to nearly fifteen percent, didn't we? And yeah. um, sunny day by about half ten in the morning, eleven they were back up at one hundred percent, and Dan was then yeah. exporting onto the grid. Yeah, we went we went overnight on some, so it was we were off the grid completely at one point, and we we we, we ran the the the, the um, appliances overnight. Took it down to in the case I'm thinking of, took it down to twenty five percent. Yeah, overnight, and that was a heavy drainage that was. Yeah, and then straight away, as you said, by by midday, before midday, it was over back up back up to hundred percent. Um. And it wasn't a particularly sunny day today. Of course, you know it's, it's pretty much sits at hundred percent permanently. It's uh, and we're, we're putting power back into the grid. Okay, so here's your main three-phase armor coming in up there. This goes to a AC isolator. So effectively, I can now fake a power cut because this system is backed up by the grid. It's an off-grid power system backed up by a mains. And if I turn the mains off, you can see the microwave is still on. You can see the grid's gone down. And the solar chargers, there's actually power now coming out of the batteries. Okay, so now we've uh, faked the power cut. You can actually see that the solar is now um, increasing. And so what the solar is now doing, it's actually um, going to increase to uh, match the critical loads, but also keep charging the batteries, which you can see. So literally, we've just faked the power cut there. All the power stayed on, the microwave stayed on, the lights in the barn stayed on. Um, and yeah, we've still got power. So moving up from there, I can now turn the mains back on. So that's our mains isolator switch. So that stops all the incoming power on site going back to there. Okay, so now we've got a bypass switch up here. The bypass switch 
should there be any issues at all with the system in the future or you want to service it, if we go from number two to number one, it allows the power directly through and back out on the mains there. So effectively, this bypasses the, um, the, the system right in front of me. Going left from there, this is called a fuse switch disconnector. So again, I can isolate the power going out from here, but in there, there's fuses and that protects all the outgoing power from the mains or from the solar. So this is your point of connection into there. Um, we also had a single phase supply on site, which has now been disconnected, but that was able to bypass between the solar and the original single phase connection. Um, also from there, we've taken one single phase out, which feeds this single phase distribution board. Since we've been here, we've re rewired the whole farm. Um, we've put new almonds in everywhere because the electrics is really unsafe. Um, we'll pan around in a minute and have a look. We've placed all the ceiling lights here with LEDs. Um, they're all like old halogen style bulbs. We had to replace all the skylights and modern ones because all the skylights were falling to bits really. So it has been quite an involved job. We'll show you some more of the electrical contracting work we've done later on. Hello there, my name is Martin. I am the senior electrician for Off-Grid Installer. This is extra work that we've been doing uh, in the barn. Single phase board, extra sockets, wooden steel wide armoured cables all the way around, it's all fed in armoured. A couple of floodlights which are very powerful at high level. Uh, this is extra work that we've picked up um, apart from the solar panels. No, it's a two, single phase, 230 volt supply, to a single phase board, RCBOs. Although the uh, original installation is a three phase, 400 volt installation in the um, main stables. As you can see, we put up extra LED lights throughout, as it, the existing ones of them didn't work. So we've replaced all these and all these and it uh, looks quite impressive when it's dark that is a single phase so it's just one of the phases that supplies to another outbuilding over there and lot and then likewise that uh, barn that we've just been in yeah these are just a couple of additional sockets that we put in one's a usb so you can plug a phone charger in for it a couple over there um, the one that's an external for outside use. There's a big four core armoured. It's a 50 mil. And it runs from up there where the transformer is on that pole. It comes all the way down to here, comes into the building, and then back out of the building, and then feeds that. So I had to splice into that, put an underground resin joint in. That's a 400 volt supply, which goes to that uh, out building there. Yes, yeah, it also feeds back into the grid. Hello, my name's Jamie. I'm one of the electricians working for the off-grid installers. Um, we've been at Springfield's farm doing the solar panels on the roof, which you've already seen a bit more about. Uh, my job has been to get these gates operational. We've had a fully automated system with keypad, um, clickers to get in and out the gates. Um, so what we did was we, we brought a four mil armored cable up from a consumer unit up in the, uh, the little barn area just there. And then that's wired into this control box just here, which you can't see because I'm in the way. Yeah, this control box just here, which does, um, you've got the photocell sensors, which stop anybody trying to walk past the gate whilst it's opening. It will stop them from obviously opening fully. Um, you've got a additional switch here, which um, disconnects the power to the actual unit itself. Um, on the other side, you have a keypad and camera. So you can obviously get, see people who's coming in and out. And that's then wired back to a control panel, um, fully, fully like it's like a little iPad. Um, in, in the other barn there, which you can then remotely let people in and out as well. Right, so once the gates now fully took us a little while of programming, we had to get one gate to open slightly um, later than the other one because it was captured a bit. But we got there in the end. It was a battle. 
once the gates start opening, when they finish the process, they're open for about 30 seconds and then they will close on their own.